So I hope everyone can see my screen now. Right. So let's start today's session. Uh, right. So in the last session, just let me. So in the last session, we saw a few basic data types in Python. Like we started Python programming and. Uh, First of all, we wanted to understand all the basic uh, stuff in Python. I will just uh, mute others' videos. Uh, mute others. Right? So now that I have muted everyone, if uh, anyone needs to speak, they can unmute, unmute themselves. Right? So let's start. In the last session, we wanted to see the basic stuff in Python. So we started with the basic data types, also called the primitive data types in Python. Integer, float, string, boolean, etc. And we saw that they are also belong, they also belong to a class. So even the primitive data types in Python are objects and are created using classes, right? Since we also discussed in last class that Python is an object oriented programming language. So everything is an object and is defined by classes. Right? So even these primitive data types have had their own classes. We saw some operators on these. We tried out different operators on these basic data types. And we saw variables, how to define variables, how to not define variables. What are the reserved keywords in Python? And understood that I mean they cannot be used as variables. And we also saw some white space characters. Apart from that, we had a basic introduction on lists, dictionaries, and sets, but we did not go into detail and we did not do any operations on these advanced data types. So today we will do that. Right? And no, after that we will do the other stuff, all of these things, right? So, but first we need to understand these advanced data types and operations on that because uh, they will be used most of the times when we will be writing our own code for uh, for data cleaning or even web scraping, manipulating, you know, other data types. These are important, right? Because you know, these these are used a lot. So let's proceed. Uh, we we had a basic introduction on lists and dictionary, and we saw how to define a list. But we will today start from scratch again and again go through lists and dictionary. And today we will also perform some operations on these. Right? So we will use some built-in functions. Uh, used on these lists and other data types, dictionary sets and tuples. And we will also understand how they work. Right. So first let's see that day we had defined lists. So it is an un, it is a an ordered collection of elements and is mutable, right? So that day I hope this is visible to everyone. So that day we started so that day we were doing everything in this Python shell, right? So before I start, just let me remind that you can use either this one in the command line or you can use ideally, right? Or there is one more tool. If you do not have Python installed in your machines, then there is one more tool that you can search and you know find. If you Google, Google Colab, Collab, then you will find this link collab.research.google.com. Now, this one allows you to uh, use Python in your browsers, right? You don't need to install Python on a machine. So, if, if you have not uh, installed Python or you are using Python on some machine where Python is not installed, right? You can still learn and do some Python stuff here, right? 
So you don't need actually Python installed in your machines if you're working. And then in on each of these lines, you can again do the same things that we're doing here. So we will not discuss this in detail. You can explore this yourself, but this is a great tool to you know understand. Uh, I mean, uh, a great tool to learn Python online, right? You can do all kind of things here. Plus, it is Google provided, so it has a lot of RAM and you know, so it would not. It's a good machine, right? You can use it. So this was one thing. Uh, Google Colab. That that's all you have to Google and first thing that you click on. So right, on any of these things you can do. Let's define a simple list, right? Uh, we know the convention, so let's define fruit list again. Right? Let's define last thing and call it call three elements that it has: apple, banana, and mango, right? So we said that it is an ordered collection of elements and is mutable. What it means is that these elements are ordered. Basically, if if you want to access these elements one by one, you can access it, right? This one is the first element, this one is the second element, and this one is the third element. So it is ordered, right? And it is indexed, right? And uh, it is mutable. So what mutable means is that you can change it. Basically, if so, let's do some operations. If I want to access an element of the list, we saw that if I want to access the first element, it starts from zero, right? So I will do fruit list zero, and I enter it, and I get apple, right? I get the first element. Similarly, I want to get the last element, which is the zero, one, two, second one, right? So I will get mango, right? So this is simple accessing. Now. Uh, and is mutable. What it means is that you can add elements to this list, right? So there are methods. We will discuss all this. But if I do append and say, you know, pair, right? Now if I see the fruit list, I see that we I have pair added to it, right? So I can change the list. This list which was initially defined. In which has three elements now has four elements, right? So it is mutable. That is, that's what mutable means, right? From three, we could add more elements, right? So it is a mutable uh, collection, and it is ordered, right? So we already saw that we have already seen that how to access the elements of a list, right? And last time we also touched on this thing that if I want, if, the, if I have a very big list. And uh, I know, so for example, um, I have a hundred number of lists, you know, hundred to two hundred, and I want to access the one ninety eighth element, right? So now, right now, it is very easy, but uh, because I know the exact number, but if I had hypothetically these numbers, then you know, finding the one ninety eighth number would be difficult. So what I would do. Is rather do the negative indexing. Basically, I would start counting from back. How that happens is happens is let they take the same example and say fruit list negative one. So I am starting to now count from the back, right? So minus one, right? Now if I say minus two, then mango. So minus one, minus two. So if you if you have to start from the back, right? You cannot count all the numbers. Or you know that something is, or something will always be at the fourth place from last. You can say that you know minus four, right? And you will get that element one, two, three, four, fourth from last. Okay. So this way you can do negative indexing and also find you know what is at the last. So some you know all of these things are useful at particular places. Uh, you have to see that where it is useful. So as I gave the example that it's a long list, very big list, and you know that the the number will always come at the tenth from back. So you can use negative indexing, right? As because as the list you know size can change. If it is always at the tenth from back, you can use this, right? So that way it is useful. I hope it is clear. If you if anyone has any questions about negative indexing, they can ask, right? So let's proceed. Uh, on the other examples, 
so similarly so currently i am only learning how to access right so i have this fruit list right now after i appended an element to it let's say i wanted to access two elements or three elements from this you know in in one go right what would i do i would uh, do like this fruit list let's say and i would say the start uh, index right and end index uh sorry and index right so i'm just defining it here obviously these are not uh, currently not defined so you know it would throw an error if i did it would say that it is not defined right so but what it means is that i can you know give a start point and an end point right so if i had to start from the second one and go till the fourth one right what would i say i can say that fruit list right start index is uh one right from the second element it would be one and last element is fourth right in index it is third so i will say like this not comma one colon three so it it says that start from one and one two right last one is not included so i will say four right so it would say one two three right this one is not included i'm sorry this had to be like this okay i hope it makes sense now and index minus one so whatever index you will put here it would be minus one so since only there are zero one two three elements i will put four here because ultimately it would be one two and three right that's what i wanted to access right i hope this makes sense this one so if you want to access let's say 100 to 117th element in a list you can directly put 100 here and 100 and you know 18th here right so you will get a list from 100 to 180th element you can see that the resultant is also a list so if i will check that what is the type of uh this one 1 to 4 i would see that obviously it is a list right because the operation is done on list it it results in a list okay so this way you can access elements in a range okay so remember this this one start index and end index and minus one right so this is how you uh, access elements if you know that from what index to what index you need elements okay i hope uh, you don't have any questions till now right next is if you want if you don't uh, if you want to start from let's let's remove this one first right so if if you want if you don't want to start give a start value and <clears throat> want to go till the end right what this will do is that you are not specifying the start value as well as you are not specifying an end value so when you are not specifying a start or end value you mean that you want to start from the start absolute start and go to the absolute end right if i do this what this there is a type typo here so if i click enter now it gives me all the values so it says that start from absolute start from apple and go till absolute end here right i hope this one makes sense to everyone this thing is called list slicing okay we are slicing the list from start element to end element minus 1 okay right so if i had to if i wanted to go from the second element and go till the end i would do like this if i wanted to go from the start till third element i would go like i would i would go like this okay is this clear now to everyone yeah so let's proceed anup can you explain one more time this uh, colon one, colon this one is right. colon right this one okay so i will just write it somewhere so that i can reference because it's not working on my machine okay it's not working. i missed 
Right. So I'll say right click here. I will define a fruits list. Okay. And I will say I will uh, let's say numbers list. I define a numbers list. Let's not do fruit list now. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have defined a lot of with the numbers here. Right? Ten. So I define ten numbers here. Okay. What I'm doing here is that I'm trying to you know access elements using this particular notation or you know syntax okay what this says let me clear this out so that it is not confusing okay so i will start from beginning and i will just define this list here okay i have defined a list now what we are trying to do is we are trying to access elements let me let's say that i wanted to access these three elements right so the index starts from zero this one is zeroth element this one is first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth right zero to ninth element total 10 elements right so if i wanted to access an element i could just use the index of that element right at the ninth place we have 10 right zero to ninth right another way is by giving negative index so again one more method is by giving it values in this form so let's say i wanted to do a slice let's say i wanted to only get these three elements 0 1 2 3 4 5 right 6 7 8 9 4 to 5 right so I want to get four to six element. Okay. Then what I would have done is set the start index and end index minus one. Okay. Let me also specify the index numbers for you so that it is, you know, more easy to understand. Right. So I have also specified the indexes here. Right. So if I wanted to get four to six element, see where is fourth? Fourth is this one. This one is fourth. Fourth to sixth element. And this one is sixth. What I can say is that num list start index is fourth one, which is third, and end its end index is sixth element, right? Okay. Right. So end element is <coughs> sixth one. So we will say seven because seven minus one will be six, right? Okay, so end index will be 7. If I do this here, we see that I get 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth element. I, I'm sorry, I had to do 4. Right, we had to go 4 to 6. Right, so we got fourth, fifth, and sixth element. Uh, is this clear now? Now, uh, if this is clear, what it is the other one is just an extension of this, right? What happens is that if I don't specify the start or end values, okay, I don't specify any of those values, it assumes that we want to start from the zeroth element, right? And want to go till the end of the all the list, right? Till the ninth element here, right? So if I don't specify either the start or the end, what happens is that I get all the elements. Is this clear now? Uh, uh, Ramesh sir, is it clear now? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Voice is not clear.
हेलो हेलो या नो इट इज क्लियर नाउ अच्छा इट इज क्लियर नाउ दैट इज इट ओके सो ओके नो सो आई विल प्रोसीड नाउ राइट so we will uh, all now look at some more operations we will we were just seeing like how to access elements through these some of these methods right so i will always do uh, you know let's call it this way right start index and end index minus 1 okay so if if i wanted to go from start until a particular element let's say fourth element right so i will get zeroth first second and third element right so zeroth first second and third element i got it from like this if i had to uh, go from you know some particular number till the end right so this will give me fourth fifth sixth seventh until the last element right so this one i can see fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth element okay so i hope this is clear now these are ways to access again where these will be needed it depends uh, on your uh, case but we will see where it so for example i'll just give a small example if you were scraping something right and uh, you whatever you were scraping ultimately came into a list okay now the first four rows of those list was not important to you right so you would do something like this right you would start from fourth right so first three rows you remove from this in fact four rows zero one first second and third row you remove and till the end you took right so this is a simple use case of that if you want to remove a few rows from a list that is handy here so let's take more examples <clears throat> if you want to change an item value right so uh, currently i have this number list and uh, if i wanted to change this fourth element to 90 line uh, in fact this is the third element zero first second and third fourth is the third four is the third element here right if i wanted to change this to 99 what i could have done as i have already discussed that the list is a mutable thing so i can change the value and i can call it 99 right now if i see the num list i can see that the fourth element has been changed to 99 right here it was 4 and here it is 99 okay so i i could change this and i mean simply now the new list has been changed you know if if i wanted i could have here see i can directly manipulating the list right so i i can change it but in case, we will see that in case of pupils we would not be able to do it right anyway so now that uh, we have still not seen loops so we could do some operations on this but i will just show you here like we could iterate over each of these elements we would do this ourselves later but let's see for now how we can do this for x in num list so what i'm saying is that for x in the number list that i have defined here and i will say that print x i am just saying that print all the numbers which are there right so it just gave me all the numbers which are there so i could iterate this is this thing is called iteration i basically i am doing one thing over and over again for all the stuff which is there in this list okay we will explain i will we will see how this for for loop work later but it's just a you know property that we can you know iterate over a list okay similarly i can see that if an element exists in this list so if i had to simply check if you know 50 exists here i could say that if you know 50 in num list uh sorry if uh, 50 in num list again we have not seen if statements till now but you know i can check uh if this exists so 50 did not exist so it did not print anything but if i if i said uh just just if i said 
is not in num list on uh, pressing enter it is throwing some value let me just restart this thing okay so i'll just define the list again I'm sorry this is a repetition but it just stop doing some doing some issues so what we were doing is that if if i want to check that if number is existing in this list so i will say if 50 uh is not in num list right so anyway what I, what i wanted to show is that if one is in is in uh, in the num list then i could print you know something No, guys, we'll have to just see why this is not working. Let's take another example to understand this. Let's take a string one. Uh, yeah, this. Uh, anyone has any questions? I'm just, you know, trying to show that if. something exists you I can think check. na uh, yeah and i think the syntax is i think syntax is not in not is not in not is it is not uh, in something if it is is not in it is not in only uh, not in the syntax seems fine uh no you putting is not in na it something not in instead of not, not in. in it is not in only acha okay okay yes uh, let me try this things the thing is that it's not uh, yeah it's now it works right you're right so if 50 not in yes this one yaar i'm sorry guys my keyboard also has some issues not in 50 we could print something right so since 50 is not there right not in this we could do something again we we would come to you know how this this all of this works until then you know just understand like this i hope this did not create a lot of confusion because we had a lot of errors right right everyone so let's proceed uh, i think there are some chats <clears throat> okay so let's proceed now i hope uh, this did not create a lot of confusion okay so now that we i have already defined a list right i can also check how many elements are there so if it was a very long list i could just say length of str there is some issue with this thing here length of str list okay so i i saw that i got the answer four because there are four elements in this list right so this is how you can check that how many elements are there in the list so how it is useful uh, it can be useful so let's say you knew you could read a file and knew how many uh, lines are there and you wanted to take the uh, remove the last four so you could say length of you know this minus 3 let's say so you could have got the number of you know rows that you want so again you know this is useful in cases where you would require it right so if you wanted to check you can do it like this again 
now since we know that the list is mutable again let let us print it once more here right it is here okay and if i wanted to change it or add one more thing to it we have already seen that if i wanted to change the second element right if i wanted to change the second element i could change it and say 99 right and now the string list will change right but if i wanted to add one more element here what i would do is that i would use an a user method called append and i will append you know an entry there okay so i will say string list and it will just add one more element at the end now i can access it by various methods by negative indexing by you know direct indexing or as any other methods you know start to end we know that it is on the fourth element so we would say fourth to end again it would give me the same answer okay so all the different methods you can use to access now the new element similarly if you wanted to insert one element you know since again the list is mutable you wanted to insert an element at a particular position now since this is ordered and you have to call a particular index to access any entry right you will have to call an index to access an entry now if you wanted to put now you can see that at the second position we have 99 if you wanted to put something else at the second position right what you would do without replacing 99 right you don't want to replace 99 but you want to put one more element in place of 99 and you know push the others you know back right what you would do is that you would say string list dot insert and the index index is 2 and the element is let's say 321 okay now the string list becomes this one now you can see at the second element basically zero first and second element i have placed 321 and i have pushed the rest at the back okay so this way i can insert elements so this way i can insert elements at a particular location similarly if if i wanted to remove 321 again what i could do was you know simply do string list dot remove and call 321 right now string list uh, becomes this one i have removed successfully removed 321 now why it would be used would again be on the case there would definitely be cases where you would want to remove something from a list or add something to a list or do these kind of manipulations right it would depend and we would see those examples later right more examples include if you wanted to uh, you wanted to remove again some element right but at a particular location obviously you could use this but let's see one more method called pop okay so pop is like this if you want if you are specifying an index great right what it would do is that it would remove that right or if you are not specifying any element or you know any number here any position what it would do is it would simply remove the last element in the list okay so yeah uh, yeah in wait you can i accept i can i have already allowed okay. yeah so yeah i have already allowed so let's proceed so we saw that we have two methods we we have already seen we have uh, two methods to add one is append and one is insert right append appends adds it in the last position inserts adds it in the position that you want just by giving the index the position that you want you can specify the element and it would be added there again to remove we have two methods one is remove remove basically you don't have to specify an index you have to just you know give what elements you want to remove but again it will have to traverse the whole list and if this is a very large list then it may take time so we have one more method called pop 
where you can specify the index right you can say that which particular element that you want to remove again this number you need not remember they will be programmatical methods to get this number right so you can specify which number you want to remove again one more method a uh, one more way if you want to remove only the last element right any list only the last element you would do something like this you know this usually uh, is useful to check what the last element is in any of the data you know structure uh, not data structure list and in any of the lists right so let's uh, see how we can delete i mean that, that's one more method to remove so let's see how we can do that if i wanted to delete only uh, the first one you know the first positional element uh, i could do it now i saw that i have only two elements left right so this was one more method but you know this deletes it and it is it returns a null value basically here you can see it returns a string you know here also it returns a string so but here we have no return uh, we will understand what are return types in functions so let's not worry let's just discuss what are all the ways to delete so we have seen two three ways insert pop and delete right okay so i think these are all the things that you know we can do with a list one more thing we can do is that if i now i have string list with only two elements and if i wanted to give this to a number list you know num list kind of uh, another list what i could have done is simply string list dot copy you know uh, what it would do is that it would just copy this all the elements in string list to another list called num list and string list will not change obviously you could append an element to string list and you know the string list uh, will be different right and num list since you've already copied the old one old one right so it would copy the whole old contents right so i hope this makes sense okay so now one more operation that we should see is that if i had two lists right if now i have two lists one is called string list and one is called num list and i wanted to add these elements you know add as in append these elements with these one what i could do is simply string list plus num list so what it did was it just took all the elements from this one and did a union basically just join both of these lists on a comma right so this is very simple to do in you know python again why this is why this can be useful is that you know if you are uh, reading two excel files and both of them are read as excel files or csv files those are read as uh, lists you know whenever you would, we would we would see this that if we read a csv file it would the data would come as a list in python right and then if we had two or three excel files and all of those come in lists then we could you know combine the columns of all of them using something like this again it depends on the how your data is there it might be list of list it might be simple list you know again depending on that we can do some operation like this okay again similar thing with you know one more way is string list dot append if you would simply append the other list right and now the string list is has been changed so what you have done is you have simply appended this list into this one right so now i have one string two string third string and fourth one is list containing one string and two string right so i could append a list to another list right so this is one more method okay this one makes sense right? i hope to everyone right and similarly we have one more method called extend okay 
it does the same thing but it is faster because it would just add the elements okay it would just take the whole previous one and add this one so basically this one and this one are work identical okay okay so all of these are the operations that you could do on a list and uh, these are basic operations you know uh, there are more operations on list but again uh, you don't need to remember it this was just an introduction because these are usually used somewhere append is usually used and uh, pop sometimes is used uh, i think these two methods are mostly used and obviously small you know these kind of things where we access elements these are useful right so these kinds of things are generally used rest whatever you need to know or you know let's say you wanted to sort a list uh sort um, sorry we have a list of list that's why it did work so but and now num the, the num list has been sorted okay so there are more different methods that you can explore i will send i will give you a link i will actually make a separate document where i will you know mention all the links which you can refer to for you know more uh, in depth uh, i mean you don't need to actually remember all that but you know just for introduction like you know to all these functions which are usually used you can you know reference that cheat sheet right cheat sheet or uh, whatever link that is that i will give in the document right so i think uh, we yeah any anyone any questions right so let's proceed hmm. okay so let's proceed now i think we all have understood how list work and we have spent considerable time on one data type and understood why it is, why it is motivated yes, getting a call okay so now let's discuss about dictionaries i hope no one has any doubt in list that they are simple ordered collection of elements and are mutable right you can change it how it is used we will see now let's talk about dictionaries right so uh, I, i would just like to go to that uh, example that we discussed that day and we could not complete there were some issues so let's just discuss why dictionaries are important obviously let's define it first so i will just clear this and you know start from scratch so i hope everyone is follow following along if there are any issues you, know, you can ask me so let's start with dictionaries let's let me call a i let me define a simple variable to hold the dictionary let's call it uh, i don't know my dictionary my dict okay and let it hold something uh, let it hold uh, attributes of a company so let's say name right and call it uh, pxil okay and uh, uh, and employees and m and m uh, and employees means number of employees right and call it 32 okay i don't know how many are there sorry if uh, but anyway let's call it 32 okay so i now see that i have a dictionary and it is called like this okay so what a dictionary is it is an unordered collection of key value pairs so as a simple dictionary is there we have we want to search something you know and then in a dictionary we find that uh, what what are we searching again that we have some value similarly in a dictionary in python we have a key right what we want to search and we have a value associated with that key and it is an unordered collection basically uh, 
I mean, there is no ordering to it. There is no zero, one, two, like as we saw in a list that we can call zero or one or two. We cannot do this in a, a dictionary because it is um, it is unordered, right? And but it is indexed. Okay, it has an index. So, for example, I wanted to access some parts of it, right? It is indexed with keys, right? So if, let's say I wanted to get only the name. So I will say my uh, deck and say like this name and I will get PXI. So this is how I can reference or I can, you know, get the value associated with each of the keys. If I wanted to get how many implies are there, you know, I could have said, uh, I could have easily said that my deck uh, and and employees. Okay, it could have given me thirty-two. Right. So this is and why why would we need ever need a dictionary is because you know sometimes we want to order uh, store our data uh, in this form. Right. We want to do mappings. Right. Uh, against name we have some value. Okay. For for mappings it is basically used. You know, it's how you want to structure the data. If you want to map or you don't want to map, again, it's up to you. You could have, you know, defined these in two different lists and stored these values together. And at the end, you could have manipulated the values. But obviously, if you have a better way to store it, why not store it, right? And uh, due to this, that day we discussed this example that I have, if I have a person uh, who has these attributes, right? How we would define it? So obviously, we would def we could define it using different variables, right? But you know, to access each one of these, I will have to call this particular variable, you know, differently, right? So we could define it in two ways, right? We could define it using a dictionary where we have a key called, you know, data, and that data holds a value called list, okay? And in those lists, we have two dictionaries, right? So obviously this would confuse at first, but uh, this would make sense very soon that why a list can hold a dictionary, okay, right? And how a dictionary can hold a list, right? So all of this will be clear, but ultimately we saw that this is a more structured way to store this data. And now if I wanted, now if I can see, you know, that I define this, you know, in this form, both of these forms. So we have two forms in which this data can be defined, either in a list. So this list holds, you know, two, dictionary, uh, two dictionaries. This way we could define this data, right? And holds one list. I hope this makes sense, right? So I'm all I'm trying to say is that we, if we had large data and we wanted to have a mapping of it, so this would be a dictionary would be the best way to store it. And now we can see that if I wanted to access the age of man, right? I could do something like this, right? 27. And if I wanted to access age, uh, sorry, name of man again, I wanted, I could do something like this, right? So the accessing would have been easier using only one variable. Right? So again, let me come to this. I have, stored you know one dictionary in a variable called my deck okay and this is how i am able to access its values now i will see how i can manipulate a dictionary again why is manipulating important is because um, how we, it would our, be our own decision that how we want to store it and dictionary since are very useful then you know some Sometimes we would also need to manipulate it, right? So as uh, these are keys and these are values again. This is key and this is value. Okay, so I uh, this this should not be confused. Simple. Now there is one more way to get the uh, value using the key. Okay, what is that? If I use my dick and say get you know, I'm using this get and I use and uh, again name 
you know name name yeah right i got p x i so this is one more way dot get okay any dictionary that i define dot get the key name okay i will get the value so this is one more way to get the value okay now uh, let me define a bigger uh, dictionary right call it uh, let's call i don't know uh, place and call it long okay. and uh, say one more um, you know found it again i don't know when it was founded so i will just say 2000 maybe before that also so we have defined a bigger dictionary now my dictionary is contains four things name and n employees place and founded okay now let's do some operations let's say i wanted to change the place now i am proceeding towards manipulating this dictionary that i have created now let's say i wanted to change the place name right uh, so i what i could have simply said is that my dict right remember how i existed i would say place i would get it now the same way if i wanted to change it what i would do is simply assign it a different value right i would now say um, again just change it okay my this it is then now if i check my dict it would say that place is then right so i was able to manipulate it and change the place again same similar way uh you know something else you want to change found it found it uh i don't know and it would be so we could do it right okay so easy so this way we can change manipulate the data inside of a dictionary So now, uh, I will add more ones. Now, if I wanted to just the same way, we did some operations on list. Obviously, some some of these things has have not been used, like you know iterations, uh, loops. But still, let's see how we can you know if I wanted to uh, iterate over these, right? Then how I would do it. iteration simply means taking each element and performing some operation on it right and iterator is basically uh, something that you know uh, takes count basically something that is checking if you know how many times that thing has happened right takes check of how many times we have to do that thing so let's say anyway uh, let me define if i had to um, iterate over all the keys in this list i would say simply the same way i was doing uh, for the list and what i saw that i simply got all the what is entered right if i would simply do for x in my dictionary it would by default you know know how to it would by default understand that i have to iterate on the keys right it iterated on the keys and printed the key values okay so i hope this makes sense now if i wanted to print values instead of you know this one then what i would do is that for x in my dict right i would say print my dict and then now understand what happens here when i have typed this you know what what has happened is that in all of the elements now x is the iterator here because x is keeping count of all the elements here right so i earlier what i did was it it was keeping count of all the keys here so it printed all the keys and right now what happened was i asked him to keep the count of the keys right now it, every time the x was each of the value in the key now i said that 
from that dictionary find the value of that key okay so what i was doing earlier was uh my dict and i was saying name okay right so i got pxi what happened when i did for x in my dict what happens is that when i say let me write it here uh let me define just a second okay so when i'm saying for x in my dict what i'm essentially saying is that for each key in my dict okay for each key each key means for each of those keys in my dictionary right i want to do something okay and what i want to do is that i want to print i want to print what my dictionary may say jo key hai wo okay the key name right i hope this makes sense so ultimately what happened was for each key right for name right so what happened at the first time x was name right in the first row first row x is equal to name second row x is equal to an employees right so what happens is that what what this thing happens now is that my dict of x is name right and my dict of x here is an employees right so this is how each of the time you know in third go it would be something else in fourth go it would be something else right so each of the time it went through all of the keys and printed the values from it right so i hope this one makes sense okay this is how it happens each of the time this particular key will change because it would iterate over all the keys this for loop okay i hope this makes sense any questions you can ask now let's proceed okay so <clears throat> we have already seen how to access each of the values in the list how to access each of the keys in the list right if i wanted to uh, iterate over only values i could you know if i say let's say i i say something like this my dict dot values right what i get is basically some data type which holds a list of values right now this is one is an iterator function uh, you know we, we can iterate over these values so what we could say is that for uh, x in my dict dot values right i could iterate over it and print simply x you know now again we iterated over each of the value because we had a list containing all of these values right and we could iterate over it and print each of the value we would come to for loop then i think i think by now you would have understood how for loop works but we will get into more detail right now again if i wanted to iterate over both keys and values you know both keys and values what could i could have done is for x y in uh, my dict dot items right i could have printed x comma y so now what it is saying is that it is printing x and saath mein y if i i could also do it like this uh x comma y so it would just put a uh, this thing in between right so it's just formatting it but i can iterate over keys as well as values here okay 
now again similarly if i i can iterate over it i can do the same things uh, i can check if you know some keys is present here if name uh, in uh, my deck you know uh, i can print you know it's there or you know it would not be there it would not print so since name is there you know it said it is there similarly i could uh, iterate over the values and say if uh the uh well well when right so delete since del is there in the values of list right it said okay okay so we can check if some value is, exists in a dictionary right uh again similarly we can if we wanted to check the length of a dictionary uh we could do that same function call length and uh, call uh, this parts my dictionary to it and it would give me the value right the length basically means the length of the keys i mean basically the number of entries you would consider this one as one entry right this one as one more entry this one as one more entry so the number of entries in this dictionary it would give right so here it gave me that it has four elements okay so again uh, we can do more meditation to it like adding elements removing elements let's quickly see how to do that my list my i don't know dictionary yeah. dictionary uh, and if i wanted to what what we have added already we have name employee space found it let's add one more attribute uh called called uh, i don't know uh, x I don't have any other so x and call it y okay. now if i see my dict i can see that i have one more uh, key called x with the value of y okay so simply you can add one more attribute uh, you know entry to this dictionary okay and if you wanted to remove what you could do was simply say my dict my dict dot pop okay and pop uh, you would give the key name okay so if i wanted to remove the name i could just do my deck dot pop name and what it said that okay i have removed this value called feed style if i just check my deck again it obviously that has been removed and now i'm left with the other you know entries in this dictionary okay so now uh, uh, here i have specified a particular key for removing what if i didn't want to specify it, then it would remove the last one okay whatever last one is added it would uh, sorry it is called pop item okay whatever last one is added it would remove it right it said i am removing xy so if i check my dict now it has removed it removed the last one whichever was added in one this okay so pop item does it pop uh with a key name removes that particular one and uh, similarly so there are more but we have seen that how to iterate over it how to add more elements in the dictionary how to remove using a particular key and how to remove the last one which we have added right so we have we now know how to manipulate it uh again there is one more method called delete if you wanted to remove one particular one but again this since it does not you know return any value so where you would want to use it you know it depends on the use case okay so if i wanted to remove place right now i could remove it and now my list would not have place to uh not list my deck would not have place in it 
right so these are all the things which you can do sim as similar to the um, copy method of list if i wanted to uh, uh, give the value of old list to some other list i could just say dot copy and it would copy it now mute it as the same elements that my dictionary okay so i think um, this much understanding of dictionaries is enough for us to understand okay now just we need to understand simple things uh, let's uh, simple things that um, a, a list let's say a list uh, as we discussed that it can it contains it contains a collection of elements which could be of any type right so a list can hold a string a uh, integer a uh, boolean any other value as well as it can hold advanced data types such as list within a list list within a dictionary and a dictionary within a list and similarly other forms right so that uh, ultimately makes for the complex data structures right so that's how i mean uh, you could uh, create a list of only dictionaries or you could create a list of only sets right you could create a dictionary of only lists right you know i hope this would make sense and uh, obviously let's try some of it okay so let's say i wanted to create a list list of list right let's create it so how i would create a list of list lol okay list of list lol lol list let's call it low list okay and low list is a list okay now this is a list right empty list list of list would be a, a list within a list okay now i have a list within a list and that list all of those lists within a list will contain their own values so a uh, b okay c b let's say and f and one more list right of um t s k and m okay now we have two lists right and low list has now one list here comma one list here right now if i wanted to access this particular k how would i access it right very simple i first since this is a list and this list how i would see that this list has two elements right each element of the list we have seen earlier is separated by a comma right in all of these lists so we can see that only one comma is there in this list so i have a big list with two lists inside it okay now i want to access this k right and this k is where in the second list right now if i wanted to reference this particular one because i only if i get this i can get k right so this one is not useful for me and this one is at the first place and this one is at the second place in terms of index this one is zeroth index and this one is first index so i would say first index right now i get first index right now this first index when i saw this returned me a list this one is also list i want to get, get the k low list one let me def, let me assign it to some other variable called uh k list okay so cause it contains k right all of these you know obviously we would have to make sense so uh, that is why i am defining like this so we could use more variables of different types let's proceed with this so k list right now k list is the same list and there we have zero first second so the second one okay so the k list is finally we have got this but what if i have to access it in one line right what would happen what would if i had to do that so i would do like this till here i have got this one and after this it's the same thing right if i put 
sorry, if I put a two here, right? It's the same thing as putting two at k list, right? It would give me this same value. So from this, you know, I could directly get here. Okay, so this is how you access a particular element in the list. If you had to get v, then again it would be zeroth element, and I think zero first second same thing. We would get a v. Okay, so this is a list of lists. Okay, similarly you could define a dictionary of lists. Let me quickly define it here and let me copy it there then. So, uh, so dic list of dictionary l list of dictionary. Okay, load it. And I would list of dictionary. So I would create a dictionary and let me create two dictionaries here, okay, or three. And each one of them would hold something. Let's say name and uh, uh, a name, okay. And uh, let's say this one holds age and uh, age. You know, so random variables uh, and place. And let's call it k place. Okay. So I have a list with three dictionaries, right? What if I wanted to sorry? What if I wanted to get k place? Okay, only k place. Load it. Now we have three elements in this list, three dictionaries. Okay, that one is the third one, right? At the index second. Okay, so I got this. Now if I could directly, now I know that since it's the dictionary that is returning, I could do simply this, and I got k this. Okay, so this is how to do operations or accessing with. I love, you know. Uh, Dictionary of list. That's what we're saying, right? List of dictionaries. Sorry. That's how we can do it in list of dictionaries. Let's quickly define a dictionary of list and let's move over then. Uh, so list, okay. And we would define a dictionary. In this dictionary, I would call list one, okay, and call it uh, one. Uh, A B C A B C. Okay, and similarly, more lists. Right? List two and list three. Uh, A one, B one. C1, B2, B2, C2. Okay. And let's define it one line because command line has some issues sometimes. So let's define like this. Okay. Hello, sir. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Some people have. Please let them in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got admitted. So uh, I have defined a dictionary. With all of these elements. Now, if I copy and paste it here, right, and I had to access only this C2, right? How I would do it is that do list, and which one is it? The third one, list three. So I would just say the key one, okay, list three. Now I got. Um, sorry, list three. I got this one. Now I know this is a list. So from a list, I can directly access the th second, third element by saying two. Right. So I got C two. So from this list, this particular thing, I could easily get C two like this. Let's say I wanted to get uh, B only B. What I would do? I know that it is a list one. Okay, what whatever the resultant will be will have uh, will be a list, right? Will be a list, and in that list it would be the first element zero and first. So I could say first, right? And I would have a B. 
right so i have a dictionary of lists and in that if i had to access a particular element i could do that using this way. okay so i mean accessing a dictionary uh, of list this way you can do right you, you can more even more than a, a complex structures like dictionaries of dictionaries and all those uh, other kind of things but you know the the funda will be same how you will access the values and then on those values whatever that type is you will you know either do indexing or do other things like this uh, like this okay this syntax should make sense what we are doing right i hope the syntax this one as well as this one makes sense to everyone if there are any issues with these please let me know i can explain these again because they would work with data structures with which they bear these things will be common right dictionaries will hold lists and lists will hold dictionaries and lists will hold lists and dictionaries will hold dictionaries so this should be clear right so if this is clear uh, i should proceed so i think uh, we have also understood how dictionaries work and we have also now seen that uh, how list of list and dictionary of dictionary all those things work and again the funda will all be same okay so we will you know uh, just do one more thing to understand if i had to do this one and wanted to change it to you know pxil you know i could definitely do that the same way now my uh, do list will change and it could contain pxil in case of so again the manipulation logic will all be same you know you would just have to understand how it is structured right so uh, and now we should proceed to other you know data types one of that is set and set uh, which we would not go through all the um can you explain sir what this question is what if we write do list to hello hi hi sir this is yes, sir. Uh, yes sir. i just wanted to know that right now we are defining just to write the do list uh, and in brackets it would be list one and then the other uh, variable that is the position hey. So can we do directly? Like, is there any direct method no. we have to give? A... No, you you would not be able to access it. No, first I have done zero or one, right? What you are saying yeah. is that what if I don't try this one and and yes, try to access correct. directly? What will yeah, happen is yeah. that let me just show you. Okay, low list. Right, yeah. low list. If you do two, it says list index out of range. so we have not yet you know discovered this error what it means is that the index that you trying to you know access does not exist so if i again read low list you say that i have only zero and first i don't have a second one right so if i this is fine right yeah yeah understood now it is fine right correct yes understood yeah okay so let's proceed uh two sets so sets again uh, i think sets is very close to lists i mean all of those are very close to each other because the methods and all of those things are very similar right it's just that uh, they are different uh, ways of storing data right now set is an unordered collection of unique elements right so here we saw that list is a ordered collection of elements and is mutable here i can see that it is again an unordered collection of unique elements so basically there is no order like 0 1 2 3 right and it is a unique elements collection so let's see what that means uh you can see that it looks like again similar way but it is defined using curly brackets a list is defined using square brackets and a set is defined using curly brackets right there are differences uh but let's see what what is common here but before that let's take an example 
Okay, I will just uh, clear this and restart. Okay, so a set is an unordered and unindexed collection of unique elements. It is not even indexed. So basically, you, you cannot access an elements uh, um, uh, like, you know, basically using that 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? And uh, um, if I see what it means by unique, so let's say I define a sample list uh, and list. Okay, and I say that I have um, A1, right, some elements, A1, B1, uh, C1, and then again A2, sorry, A1, A1, and then uh, B2, then uh, C1, and then C3, right. So you, uh, basically I'm just trying to define something. Right? So I have defined a list called sample list and this has some elements right what if i wanted only the unique elements out of it right i would simply do set um, set of sample list right and what it would give it would take out all the unique uh, i mean basically repeating elements like a1 and c1 right and uh, it would keep only one copy of it right so whenever you would want to take out only the unique elements from a list, you would use a set, right? So, I mean, sets, obviously it is again iterable and all of those things, many uh, things, uh, you know, you can add uh, elements to it, right? Uh, so for example, set list dot add, you know, you could add D4 to it and um, sorry. Uh, yeah, it is because wait. So when I said sap list, I could have just assigned it to a variable called sap set. Okay. And now I can do all of those similar operations that we did, did on list and uh, uh, dictionary here, right? I wanted to add default, so I could add it. And now sap set will be set will be will be having d4 as well okay so lists i mean sets you would not be using directly uh, until you would want to you know take out unique elements from a list you would not use it but again uh, this is used to because you know this is very efficient right I mean, uh, in list, you have to iterate over each element, and you have you will have to check that if that element already exists, you know somehow, and then you will get a unique list. So that is very compute intensive. But set you will directly get, right? And these sets and all of these data structures are used in you know the data science uh, libraries because uh, these are the ways you know the data manipulation happens in all those very efficient libraries, right? So we would not need to go very deep into these because these have already been implemented in all of those libraries that you will use. But again, someday if you want to write your own libraries, sets are great. Uh, again, if you want, I can go into more detail, but it is not used, it is not useful to us. There are add, similar method, add, update, remove. Okay, getting the length. So for example, if I wanted to get the length, it is very simple to what we have already seen. So obviously we, I mean, uh, you don't need to remember a lot of things here. We have seven, right? So if you have worked with lists, you know you have a grasp of lists. You can work with sets, okay? And you don't need to. I mean, uh, you don't need to um, basically remember any of the other things, right? As simple as that. One more thing is tuples, right? An unordered collection of elements and immutable. So all the things that we have discussed for list, uh, it holds true for tuples. Again, we would not want to go into each of these. Let's just define one, right? How it is done is uh, we have seen that it is done using square brackets, and this is done using uh, this uh, normal brackets, right? It's not curly one. It's not a square one. Uh, so it is a normal bracket, right? So if I had to define a tuple, okay. Uh, 
sam cube okay let's call it sam cube i would have done it like this a uh, b and c sorry c right now i have a tuple if i want you to check uh, sam cube i will see that is the tuple right now how it is different just discuss once that it uh, i mean you cannot change like we uh, we could do insert and we could do append like all those things you would not be able to do here right so if i tried sam i t u p dot append and added something right okay it would throw me an error because tuple object has no attribute append okay so tuple does not allow you to uh, you know append it but you can sure remove a value and you can remove a value by again the same way you could do it in a list so you could do a uh, hey. mm. i think uh, so just a second yeah so uh, tuple has no attribute remove hmm. so obviously what we are trying to do is change right we can not change right we can not change a tuple so we are uh, uh, doing something uh, which which could manipulate the tuple so that is why it is throwing an error so obviously i i said this wrong that you can remove it you cannot remove because you cannot change a tuple right anything you want to do to a tuple you will have to convert it to a list like this so uh, sam list okay and the sam list sam li and i would say list of the sam tuple okay what this would happen is that it would convert that list you know into that that tuple that we had defined here into a list and now you can change the element let's say you wanted to uh, change the b to a k right you would say one equal to k uh, k right and now sam uh, li will be akc now if you wanted to change it back to the same tube what you would do is same tube right and uh you would say tuple and pass sam li okay now sam tuple has been modified now you can uh sam please why does it not move sam to list a k c and So now it changed. Okay. So similarly, uh, you can do other manipulations like list. I mean, if you had two tuples, you could add it. And uh, similarly, other things. So, uh, but again, it's just that you you would not be able to change it uh, directly. You know, you cannot change it directly. You will have to convert it to a list, uh, just like I did it here, and then change some value and then convert it back to a tuple. and so i mean obviously we would think that why is it necessary to use tuples uh, why not lists so lists uh, allow us to change it but let's say you wanted to create a variable 
such that it could never change right uh, no and no one should change it and no one can ever change it right so you would use a tuple right so that is where tuples are useful and uh, you know tuples uh, if you have a very large uh, list right uh and uh, they might it might be you know difficult to access each element but if you know that your your the size of your uh collection is defined and uh, constant then you should always use a tuple because then uh, it could be faster the operation should be faster as, as a tuple okay but you do if you do not know how long your list will be you can use a list right so um, only these two small differences are there between a tuple and a list right so i think we have discussed all of the data types let's proceed right we have all, already seen uh, some accessing values append pop sort reverse slice uh, slicing i mean sort and reverse we saw slicing we saw that particular you know my list or sam list sam list uh, you know two to three Right, so this is called slicing. This we've already seen it. Accessing values, iterating over keys. Right, we've all seen that. Now let's uh, come to conditional statements, or you know, if else, that is how we do conditional things in Python. So, just give me one minute. <coughs> right, sorry. So this is a, uh, I mean, this is a typical structure of a conditional, I mean, with else statement, right? If some condition is true, then we do this. Uh, let me just change it somewhere. Show you. So, right, this is the this is the structure. Uh, if something is true, then do this. Or if some other condition is true, right? Then we do something else. Or if any of these conditions are not true, uh, then we come to the fallback task. Is behind this particular thing. Let me. Okay. So the last one. Else we do the fallback task. So if some condition is true, we do that. Otherwise, if some other condition is true, we do some other thing. Or if none of those are true, we you know ultimately could come to the fallback task, right? So let's say let's do it with some example, uh, and uh, let me define this number list as such. So what if uh, what if I wanted to print? What if I wanted to print? Uh, mm, I am here at at all odd numbers, odd numbers, right? And uh, again, we have not yet introduced loop, but we will use it to understand how this works. And I wanted. To print, I am not here at all even numbers. Two things we have not yet discussed, which were very required. Uh, one is identation, right? Identation is Python. We will discuss it, right? Why is it necessary? What is it? But uh, since we are only doing stuff in Python interpreter until now. Uh, we have not discussed it, but we will come to that. Okay, Python. In Python, you need to identify uh, the identification. Uh, sorry, uh, the identification itself is the scope. Okay, of a you know block. So we will also understand what scope is. But let's say let me just go to Python. Okay, so let I have defined a list called numlist, which has ten inmates. Now I wanted to print. I am here at all the odd numbers, and I wanted to print. I am not here at all the even numbers. So what would I do? If you know my num list, num list, 
if each of the elements in the num list if i could somehow find if these are odd or even right then i could easily take decision right my decision flow would have been if number list is uh, odd right then print uh, i am here right uh, i am here and you know l l if number list is even then no, sorry as so i'm just writing a pseudo code this is not the correct python code but i'm just writing it i am uh, not here and the fallback is else that print i don't know i have not encountered this case so i have just written a pseudo code that if i wanted to actually write this what would i write if i could somehow know that if each of the element in this list if the current element in num list is odd right so this is what i have to write this is this should be my conditional flow right with the condition current element in the number list is odd then i am here if the current element now what i have to do i have to go over each of the element to check this right so this should be this would be coming in a loop right so for each element in num list right okay this we can say if each element in num list i know for each element in num list if the current element in num list is odd uh, i am here right this is what we have to replicate so what we would do now we can define in code for x let me let me call x each of those elements in this list for x in num list right this is how we write for loop in python we will come to that for x in num list now x is the iterator you know which is holding each of these values one by one okay for x in num list you know if x now now i have to come at the algorithm which will you know find me if the x is odd or even so that is very simple let's not get more into it and use the modulo operator what it says that if x modulo 2 equal to 0 what does it mean we have already seen modulo operator and 13 modulo 2 gives me 1 basically 13 is odd right if i divide if i modulate by 2 the remainder is 1 right similarly 10 modulo 2 is 0 right so if the modulo comes 0 similarly 8 modulo 2 uh, is again 0 you know 16 modulo 2 is again 0 but 21 modulo 2 is 1 right so all i have to do is modulo by 2 if modulo gives me remainder 1 then it is odd modulo gives me remainder is uh, even uh, ring 0 is even right so if modulo gives me remainder 0 i can print right print that i am not here this is what i have to do right uh elif elif x modulo 2 equal to 1 and i would say print i am here sorry i'm here else this case and i would just comment this out. so i have only these two things here all of the other things are comments uh okay. just see so uh so i would uh, this is the syntax if some condition is true
So I hope all of us have understood what we have written here because we've already written the pseudo code what we wanted to do. Exactly that thing we have written here, right? If if that element divide modulo two is equal to zero, then it is even. Then I am not here. If it is odd, I am here. Uh, or otherwise, I have not encountered this case. Now, if I run this, okay, if I just save this one, as we have already discussed, we can save it using .py extension. I would say that test underscore one dot .py. And if I wanted to run it, I would just you know go to command line again. Simply, I would go to cd documents. As we last time discussed how to uh, traverse using the command line, and I would do simple test dot one. I I saw that for every odd element, uh, sorry, for every uh, even element, you know zero, it said. Uh, okay, it started from one, right? That is why. It it's not starting from zero now, right? So for all of the odd elements, it said I am here, and for all of the even elements, it said I am not here, right? So this is how it is useful, right? Uh, if, if we wanted to do this operation, this is how we could do it. Okay. So the basic thing that we saw here is that we could operate on conditions, right? If this particular condition was true, only this this would happen. You know, if this condition was true, only this would happen. So this particular thing here. Would evaluate to true, right? If this particular thing evaluates to true, only then this thing will happen. So let us check what that means. Holding true, right? Let us define this list again in the console once and open it once. Okay. I have defined this list. Okay. So what it means that this particular condition hold true or not, right? If I say x is equal to num list and say the zeroth element only, okay. Now x is what one, right? Now if x modulo two, I say x modulo two is one. If I say equal to zero, right, it says false, right? So x modulo two one, you know, is false. But if I had assigned x as first element, that is two, and said x modulo two equal to zero, now it would have been true because now x modulo two is zero, right? X is what two two modulo two is zero, right? Okay, so this is what it means. This particular condition held true in this case, right? When it did not hold true, it went to the other condition, right? And this one hold, held true then, right? Either of these two conditions held true, right? So the execution was happening based on the condition, right? And that is why if else is called the conditional flow, right? So if else, if else is very simple, you could obviously write um bahut bada if, if statement and write very big elif statement you know depending on or you could write nested loops you could write if again if uh, if uh, um, now that you already know it is odd you know you could check if uh, it is also divisible by 4 you know uh, so you could say that if x x modulo 4 is equal to 0 i would say uh, print. Uh, this is great. Right now, what I would see that whatever is divisible at four also prints this particular thing. Let's simply you know print it yeah. and see what happens. Uh, okay. Did not save it, sorry. So here we saw that at four, you know, zero, one, oh sorry, one, two, three, and four, we also got this. This is great. 
again a date we got that this is good so you can do you know nested loops uh, sorry nested if statements you know if statement inside of an if statement and uh, using this you can create a very complex you know structure <laughs> it is said that you know ultimately everything is uh, a block of if else statement because ultimately everything happens like this you know if if this is true then do this because ultimately uh, we become at a point in any of the cases we come at a point where, where we take either this decision or that decision you know or if either of those don't happen uh, you know use a fallback fallback option you know that's it that is exactly what you know uh, uh, if else you know thing um, teaches us okay so next is loops uh, i think uh, for today this much should be enough so we can take loops and functions and file handling exception handling all of those other things you know list uh, dictionary lambda functions we would also touch on generators and iterators obviously it is not at all useful because it is already used in the libraries that we will be using they are very useful to uh, to optimize uh, process because they are also iterators but we will only be focusing on things that we will commonly use in all of the applications that we will make you know in python because uh, those those uh, types you know obviously if you are handling very large data then all of those things are useful uh, to learn but um, if you want to uh, do day to day tasks and not want to create a system which has thousands of users then you don't need to go to that right so we will keep it simple and discuss things that are most useful to us but having said that we would not leave anything right we would cover all the things also object oriented programming concepts in python right uh, i think this text is wrong here but i will change it right so we will uh, do all of that thing okay so we will start with loops and functions and other things in rest of the classes and ultimately we will have to do some python coding sessions we will take out some big examples where loops as well as lists as well as dictionaries all of these things come and you know uh, combine to uh, uh, solve the problem that we are trying to tackle right so again i can just take any example and see that you know how it is used so i mean here for example we are doing some list manipulation right we are taking something from some list and appending into some other list right and obviously this was a very simple example in terms of you know data manipulation but there can be uh, there can be data where you would need a lot of manipulation and you would see that right we would see definitely see that right we also did something here but uh, again uh, i think all of these things uh, we will go into next to next lecture because i think we still have something to discuss uh, these things and these things will also take some time to understand because all of these things are uh, also used in all of the programs that we will write okay. so i think this is all from my side i will if you have any questions uh, we can take now otherwise you can also mail me later right so this is all from my side anyone has any questions hello so uh, i hope that is good so i think um, whatever was discussed today was und was understood uh, to everyone uh, if there are any issues definitely please uh, contact me and i will upload this uh, video to youtube and share you the links of these slides as well as the video okay so uh, i think that's it uh, we should meet next time on thursday